would you like, I mean, you like drawing standing up, is that, is that right? Or? Yeah, I prefer standing up for drawing, really. It's just, uh, I think it gives you a better perspective than crouched over a, a table, really. Yeah. So do you, do you draw, I mean, any, anything that you make, any sculpture or anything, do, do you have to draw it first? Yeah, it, it all starts with a like, preliminary drawing, just to kind of get your dimensions and get it into your head what you actually on with, I suppose, it's visualise it, doesn't it? Put down on paper. Yeah. So we'll have a go at this. Uh, I've marked it out for the depth. So. So presumably, go game because you can't draw your own profile, can you? So. Not really. Like I said I think he would take a, photo, a few photographs of himself. Or, or use them. Yeah. And then work from that. Do you know, I can always tell it's in because of the nose. You see that nose? Yeah, it's broken nose. Yeah, but is it's also it's sort of hooked. Hmm. There's a, quite a few um, in his self-portraits. Is that that one that he did in Le Paul Du, where he, he's sort of satanic presence, looks like a playing card a bit, hmm. with, um, with a snake and everything. But his nose is kind of sort of hooked almost. Quite. Yeah, and in, in, in this... Profile. His bottom lip doesn't look very pronounced, but when you look at it from the front, from the front, it it, it, it really is. It's a little bit. I think it's actually gone beyond slightly exact profile. I think they've pushed the jug a little bit away. This profile, it's a little bit foreshortened. Right. It's not a perfect side on. Actually, yeah. Actually, well, look at that. So flattened it, front. Yeah, yeah. Because they've kind of pushed away slightly that way. But uh, anyway, we'll. Let's see what we can do. Let's, let's, get, let's get the lines in more, yeah. more solid than that. Definitely. I, I really like your drawings. They're, 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 they're sort of free, but, but at the same time really kind of controlled. Basically, you've got a very nice touch, I think. But you, 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 you like drawing, don't you? I mean, yeah, it's something I've done ever since I was a little boy. You know, I absolutely adore it, kind of. Yeah. You can just, your mind kind of just, uh, what would you, what, how would I describe it? kind of disintegrates. It's probably the best way of saying it. Yeah, my mind's disintegrated many a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are the best drawings you've ever made that you think are the best? Uh, I, I can't really say. Well, I, I've done so many, I've kind of <laughs> lost count of them, to, in, in all honesty. I, 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 re, I really have. Mm. So it'd be, it'd be difficult to say. But I, did, I did some really good uh, early drawings when I, when I was a, a young fellow, but... I've kind of, my eyesight has, has kind of let me down in these last years, you know, which it does as you get older, I suppose. Yeah. It's like it's like with anything with, with art, it's kind of like a, by the time you get the uh, the skill and the experience, everything's starting to flip and go, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. But a lot of artists who lived to, um, you know, to an old age, hmm. you can see what's happened, you can see it in their art, can't you? Because you like Titian, for example, the late Titians are really sort of blurred, you know, and yeah, and, and yeah. contemporary sort of art historians and critics they tend to say, oh, this was like a deliberate thing where his art was loosening up and that. But actually, I think you just couldn't see properly. Like exactly, that. yeah. <laughs> so when you um, when you started out as a forger, hmm. you you did. I mean, you actually sold drawings, didn't you, as well? Yeah, my first successful sale, if you can call it, that was a. Uh, a little Degas sketch of a sitting ballerina. I did about half a dozen of them, and just to get the spontaneity in them, and chose the best what I what I thought was the best one. Mm. I took it in. I was very nervous at the time, and to sit there with the expert examining it and what have you. And anyway, cut a long story short, he just it, it, he took it away and gave me a receipt for it, and it ended up as a the, the genuine article, and also something missing supposedly. A, a lost, uh, a lost drawing. I just made it up, so I, I can, I can't explain that one. <laughs> so who, who said it was a lost drawing? The, the guy at the auction, uh, or you? Yeah, this, no, the the, uh, the researchers for the auctioneers when it went to London. I, I took it into Chester to, uh, I'm not saying which auctioneer, but it was the, yeah. like the provincial office. Yeah. And it went off to London. It was there for months and months in London. I just thought that nothing's going to happen over it. I won't hear anything about this. And then they said it was going in a sale, and I, th I, th I think the photograph cost me five hundred quid. In, in the catalogue. Yeah, so <laughs> how much did it go for? Uh, a few thousand pounds. A, a, a lot of money from when I was a young fellow. Yeah. Over ten, I think it was over 10,000. 
So do so. So how do you how do you do that then? Do you just do like one drawing, or do you practice for ages, or how does it work? Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of I I won't labour over them. I just like, get a few pieces of paper, and whiz them up. Just have, have a look at stuff. You've got to go and see it really, rather than just looking books. It's just not the same. Get it into your head and get the idea, like get the style, and then just whip say half a dozen off very quickly. And then when I've done the six, I'll like look back over them and choose probably one that I think is the best that looks most, mm. the most like, spontaneous and in, in the hand and then put that in hopefully. So you sort it. of learn the style of the artist as it were yeah. and then yeah, try like, and do some like them. Yeah exactly because every artist has kind of like signature marks in where uh, they'll like probably put the eye in or whatever and they all have that particular and it's kind of identifying that which is the, the main thing in Forge, identifying what when someone looks at a picture, ah, that that looks like like such a body as, you, as you'll do yourself. You can go, you, you train your eye to it, mm. and uh, and just go for it, I suppose. Mm. But that's different from what you're doing here, right? Which is basically oh yeah, this preparing is, for yeah, this a is sculpture. Just, yeah, it's just a, like a prep sketch. It's nothing to do with like they okay. go forging. It's just in my own average hands, I suppose. Uh. So just because uh, you, you know, so just looking ahead. So you, you, when you finish this drawing, mm. what are, what's the next stage? Well, the next stage after this, I have to get some tracing paper, trace it off, and then put the tracing onto card, like two millimeter card or so. Cut the profile, mount that on my uh, sculpture wheel, and then get on my plastering the clay onto it. Right. So we've got to, that's, that's the next stage to trace it onto cardboard and cut out a cardboard profile. Okay. Ready, ready for modelling. I'll do that next then. <laughs> <laughs>